So we're at the uh, Six Peaks Dinosaur Track Site in the Carbon Creek Basin in northeastern British Columbia near the town of Hudson's Hope. And it is, uh, right now, is about one of the largest track sites in North America. Um, we have about 700 square meters exposed of dinosaur tracks that are from the Gething Formation, which is lower Cretaceous in age, are about 115 to 117 million years old. Uh, by the time we're done this site, we'll, our plans are to excavate 3,500 square meters, and when we do that, this will be uh, one of, if not the largest dinosaur track site that's ever been documented in the world. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for a modest gentleman on my right here, Mr. Barry Moreau, and uh, his friend, Mr. Nelson, who actually discovered the site. So this is critically important. And he didn't keep it to himself. Um, he came to us in Tumbler Ridge, to the Dinosaur Discovery Gallery, with a camera and a few photographs, asking, is this significant? Is this significant? <laughs> <laughs> latex is because we're trying to make a copy of the prints that we have here um, in a way that's not going to damage the, uh, the prints and we brush it on and we let that set and uh, we uh, continue building up the layers and the first layer is always a very thin layer so we can get as much detail as possible. We're going to make a copy of this. When we're done this, when we peel it, when we bring it back to the lab, we uh, make a, uh, um, a master cast of it. Had to do some prepping prior to doing this as much as possible to see the prints better and the outlines. You can see the digital pads. And there we are. This dinosaur track site has a huge diversity of dinosaur footprint types walking all over the surface. There's at least 12 different dinosaur tracks types that we've been able to document so far on the surface with just a small amount of the track surface exposed. So we're really excited to get the rest of the track surface exposed and find out what else could be there that we just haven't seen yet because it's covered with the, all the rubble and the overlying rock. But one of the footprint types that we find is from a plant-eating dinosaur. This is an ornithopod. So they usually walk on their hind legs, but they also walk using their forelimbs as well. So we get hand and foot impressions side by side. And we get small, medium, and large-sized ornithopod trackways on the surface. So this footprint right here actually is from an ornithopod, but it's the smallest ornithopod footprint that we have on here. So they get much, much larger. We also have footprints from several different types of large meat-eating dinosaur that would be closely related to Allosaurus. So we're way too early in the Cretaceous for T. rex or any of T. rex's relatives. So all of our big carnivorous dinosaurs are more closely related to Allosaurus than they are to T. rex. So we have at least three different footprint types from Allosaur-like meat-eating dinosaurs. And then one of our big surprises, quite literally a big surprise, were the footprints from this animal, a brontosaur. So the technical name for the group is sauropod, and we have at least two trackways of sauropods on the surface, and sauropods had never been documented from the Gething Formation before, so this is really a big deal. And then we also have a very strange meat-eating dinosaur footprint that we don't have a model for just because it, the animal that it came from is so weird. We have footprints from large birds on the surface, and a, also footprints from small and medium-sized meat-eating dinosaurs. So quite a huge diversity of dinosaur life is represented on this snapshot of a surface.
sitting next to a uh, sauropod track and it was a bit of a surprise to find that here because they weren't reported in the whole hundred year history that tracks have been known from this formation. So again, it was a bit of a surprise for us, but it has all the characteristics of a sauropod track that we need to uh, identify it. Uh, sauropods on their hind feet had three clawed digits and two without claws. So you can see there's the first one and it's a big claw impression and then there's a claw drag out of the footprint and then the second and the third and then there's the two digits that did not have claws making impressions and you can see they're very blunt. The footprint's quite deep and we have just finished preparing it. Um, when we first started the footprint was filled up with infill from the uh, previous uh, the layer that topped this, uh, this track layer. So it took us about a week to uh, get down to the bottom of the, uh, the footprint, but we're there now and it's just about ready to be molded. This was another surprise that we uh, found was a four-toed, a very large four-toed theropod track. And I've got one uh, outlined here right now and I've got, here's the third one. And this is a footprint that's 54 centimeters long from the base, which is about here. And this is a little uh, drag of the metatarsal or the back of the heel. And uh, so it's a very large animal, would have had over two and a half meter hip height. And it is weird. We certainly weren't expecting it. Um, this is a left footprint. We can tell that because there's a curve of the middle digit this way and that middle digit in theropods usually curves to the uh, midline of the track but there's also a notch here and that's a notch we call it a theropod notch and it's usually seen behind well it's always seen behind digit number two and uh, so that is additional proof that it's a left plus we've pieced together a trackway and uh, and so we've got it uh, pretty well pretty well figured out but uh, four-toed track, very unusual, never been described from uh, the Gething Formation before and is something that is not known uh, globally either for this time period. So it's something new that we will be describing and uh, add to the pantheon of taxon ichnotaxonomy for the uh, Gething Formation. Ten point eight for two. Today we're taking uh, trackway measurements, and that's sort of the pinnacle of the what we're doing here. So things like footprint length, the width of the footprint, the length of the digits, and also the spread of the digits, which we call the divarication. This is all the data that lets us know what the animal's doing, how fast it's going, what direction it's going, and how it's walking, whether it's waddling or whether it's running or whether it's just going along at a leisurely pace, what it might be avoiding, what it's, if it does any funky twists or turns. So this is all, all of the behavioral data, all of the cool story is in the numbers. It starts with, look, here's some tracks, but this, you know, this, the devil's in the details and you get the details by doing the work and that is collecting these measurements. So this is 2016 and we have uncovered 700 square meters of a track surface and we have another um, probably close to 3,000 square meters left on cover which is a project that will take us a few more years. So we do require additional funding in order to be able to do that. And our ultimate objective is to put a building over the site and protect the largest track site in the world which is here in its home in northeastern British Columbia. 